This film begins when a middle-aged man and a boy named Shota were entering a shopping center. It turns out their goal in going there was not to shop, but to steal goods in the shop. They had a signal they used to communicate when doing their action. Osamu would divert the clerk's attention by filling his shopping basket while Shota would take everything he could take from the shelves, and after that, they immediately left from there. Before returning to their home, they went to buy croquettes to stave off hunger. The price of these croquettes was of course cheaper than the price of the items they stole. On the way home, they saw a five-year-old girl who was outside alone. Because the weather was very cold and they felt sorry for the child, they finally invited her to come with them to their house. It turned out they lived together in a small house. The house was filled with five people. Along with Osamu and Shota, there lived Hatsu, the grandmother who was the oldest and lived off her retired husband, Obuyo, who worked in a laundry in Aki, who worked as a prostitute. In fact, they didn't have any kinship at all, but they were together because they had a specific goal. Apart from work, they also often shoplifted to get what they needed. At first, they didn't care about Osamu and Shota who brought the little girl who claimed to be Yuri. But after seeing the girl was hungry, Hatsu felt sympathetic and gave her food. Seeing this, Noguyo also felt happy with the girl's presence. At that time, Aki asked if Shota had taken all the things he needed. However, because he was too hasty, Shota ended up forgetting some things and promised to pick them up tomorrow. After Yuri felt full, Osamu and Nobuyo planned to take Yuri to the place where they found the girl. But when they got there, they heard Yuri's parents arguing about her. The mother said that they really didn't want the girl, so Osamu and Nobuyo had no other choice but to take Yuri back to their house. The next day, they went about their activities as usual. Osamu worked at a construction site and Nobuyo worked at the laundry, while they left Shota and Yuri at home with Hatsu. Seeing Yuri getting close to Hatsu and paying less attention to him made Shota start to feel jealous. Meanwhile, Yuri, who felt comfortable with Shota, followed him wherever he went even when he shoplifted at a small shop not far from their house. After Shota managed to get the item he wanted, he asked Yuri to get out of there immediately. In the evening, the family gathered and had dinner together. They didn't know what the little girl wanted so they only gave her snacks even though she looked like she wanted to try the food on the table. They were worried that Yuri's parents thought they had kidnapped their child, but Nobuo believed this would not happen. Yuri also told them that she once lived with her grandmother but unfortunately, she had passed away, which made Yuri feel lonely. Not long after that, Osamu came home from work. But on that day, he had an accident and his leg was injured so for a while, he was required to rest and not continue his work. The next day, Shota took Yuri out again, at that time, he shoplifted again at the shop. This time, he also stole Yuri's favorite gluten cake. On the other hand, Osamu's accident apparently didn't stop him from stealing things from the shop. He again carried out his action together with Yuri and Shota. When Osamu tried to distract the shop owner, Shota stole two fishing rods and then ran away from the shop. After being quite far from there, Shota told Osamu not to invite Yuri next time they carry out their action. He said that Yuri was a burden and would make it difficult for them to carry out the action. Hearing this, Osamu explained that they had to share the task, and after all, Yuri was his younger sister. Hearing the word made Shota even more annoyed and didn't think of Yuri like that. He ran away as a sign of not accepting Osamu's statement. Meanwhile, Yuri looked sad and didn't want to continue walking after Shota didn't think of her as his sister. When they got home, Yuri looked sad because Shota had not returned. Nobuyo, who realized that Yuri was worried about Shota, said that Shota would be fine. Meanwhile, in another place, Osamu finally found Shota who was alone. Osamu thought that Shota didn't like Yuri's presence, but Shota felt that what they were doing was more interesting if it was just the two of them. Hearing this, Osamu also gave Shota an understanding and asked him to consider Yuri as his sister. At the same time, Osamu also asked Shota to call him father, but he refused to do that. After two months in that house, Yuri's family finally announced the loss of their child, and at that time, they realized that Yuri's real name was not Yuri. After seeing this news, they were a little scared and asked Yuri to immediately return to her house, but Yuri, who felt happy with the presence of her new family, refused the request. They had no other choice but to change Yuri's appearance and identity to avoid suspicion. Since then, Yuri felt more and more accepted in the family. Every day, she would follow Shota wherever he went. Hatsu said that Yuri felt a kinship between them. Nobuyo then brought Shota, Yuri, and Hatsu to the shopping center to buy some clothes for Yuri, and just like they usually did, they would steal the clothes. After returning home, Nobuyo took a shower with Yuri. At that time, Nobuyo felt an inner bond between them and began to love the child like a mother. Yuri also felt that she had received a mother's love which she didn't get from her own biological mother. Because of that, Yuri and Nobuyo were getting closer and often spent time together. Being too long with Shota caused Yuri to be affected by Shota's behavior. One day, when they were at a shop near their house, Shota taught Yuri how to shoplift. But apparently, the shop owner found out, and instead of getting angry or punishing them, 
A shop owner instead gave them food and asked Shota not to teach his sister like that again. In a different place, Nobuyo got into trouble. Her boss asked one of the staff there to stop. Her colleague at work didn't want to budge and threatened to report her after finding out that Yuri was with her. Having no other choice, Nobuyo finally chose to quit her job. That evening when their family gathered, Shota told Osamu what the shop owner had told them. Hearing that, Osamu agreed and said that it was too early for Yuri. The next day when the holiday arrived, the family went to the beach. They looked like a real family who spent their vacation together. Shota and Osamu looked like father and son, Nobuyo and Yuri looked like mother and daughter, Aki looked like their older sister, while Hatsu saw the happiness of this family from a distance and felt like she had a real family. At night, Yuri woke up after her tooth fell out and woke everyone up. After throwing her tooth on the roof tiles, they tried to wake Hatsu, unfortunately. She did not wake up, and it turned out that Hatsu had passed away. They didn't seem sad about Hatsu's death, except for Shota and Yuri, because they had experienced this before. Because they didn't have enough money for the cremation, they decided to bury Hatsu's body in the yard. The next day, Nobuyo and Shota went to the bank to cash out all of Hatsu's savings. At that time, Shota said something that Osamu taught him, namely that they could take anything in the shop knowing some of it wouldn't end up possessed by anyone Nobuyo. Who heard this could only agree with this statement, but as long as the goods they took didn't cause a loss to the shop. When they arrived at the house, Nobuyo and Osamu counted all the money they had withdrawn. They felt that the death of Hatsu had helped their finances, but it seemed that Shota and Yuri began to feel that what they were doing was wrong. In the afternoon, Osamu asked Shota to steal things in the car park, but Shota refused and just left him. After managed to get something, they ran away from there. Here, Shota remembered the past, and then he asked about when Osamu tried to save him at the same time he also tried to steal from the car he was in, but Osamu admitted he didn't do that. After that, Shota and Yuri went to the shop near their house but saw that the shop was closed. They thought the shop owner closed the shop after the losses he experienced because Shota and Yuri always stole from the shop. They had no other choice and Shota finally took Yuri to another shop. At that time, Shota asked Yuri to wait outside, and he would go inside to get something. However, Yuri, who wanted something, refused and entered the shop. Before stealing the goods there, Yuri used the signal that Shota usually used, afraid that the shop owner would find out. Shota tried to divert attention by carrying a bag of oranges and ran away from the shop. He continued running until he got away from the shop, but unfortunately, he got cornered. He had no other choice and finally jumped off the bridge. This resulted in Shota being caught and hospitalized. As a result, this also dragged all the family members. Osamu and Nobuya were asked to provide information, but they tried to escape from the hospital. In the evening, they also tried to leave the house and leave Shota alone in the hospital, but their efforts failed after the officers managed to get ahead of them. After this incident, Yuri was taken to undergo recovery. She was asked to explain everything she knew. Apart from that, they also went to Shota to be questioned, but Shota still protected his family and said what he did was his own will and did it alone. Knowing that Shota was lying, the officers asked him to be honest and tell the truth. They also explained that the family was trying to leave him alone at a time like this, and how they did was not a form of kinship. In another place, Aki just found out that Nobuyo and Osamu had an illicit relationship. It was previously known that both had killed Nobuyo's husband and buried him. When this was asked, Nobuyo said that this was a form of self-defense, otherwise her husband would kill them both. The police both linked this to the death of Hatsu. They thought that the two of them were doing the same thing again, just to get the money. After that, Osamu was interviewed about Yuri. At that time, he said that the one who brought Yuri to their house was Nobuyo. She felt pity for the child because she looked hungry. Hearing this, the police finally decided that what they were doing was a form of kidnapping. On the other hand, Aki found out that all this time Hatsu had been taking advantage of her. It turned out that Aki's family had snatched Hatsu's husband, and they would pay her every time they visited because Aki lived with her. He also found out that all this time, Hatsu had not sincerely loved her, but only wanted their money. After what happened so far, Nobuyo was finally found guilty. She was considered to have committed kidnapping and murder to Hatsu, and had to end up in prison. Meanwhile, Shota would be sent to the social service and get a proper education while Yuri would be returned to her family. When Yuri was back to her family, she again experienced bad treatment from her own mother which made her feel sad. At that time, Nobuyo was informed that Yuri wanted to go back to her mother but she didn't believe this. Seeing Nobuyo's attitude who couldn't let go of Yuri, the officer thought that Nobuyo was just jealous. The officer also asked what the two children called her and what they thought of her. Tears began falling off her cheeks as she said that she also wondered about that. One time, Shota was on holiday and Osamu took him fishing using a fishing rod they stole some time ago. After that, Osamu took him to visit Nobuyo in prison. 
When Nobuyo saw Shota, she felt sorry for him and explained where they found Shota and the details of the place. She did that just in case Shota wanted to return to his family. Nobuyo felt that they didn't deserve to be his parents. Feeling sad, Nobuyo immediately leaves the two of them. After that, Osamu took Shota to his new residence, which was very cramped. Shota, who started to feel comfortable with Osamu, offered to spend the night there with him. He lay down next to Osamu. He also asked if Osamu really tried to leave him that night in the hospital. Osamu confirmed this and said that they were the ones who were finally caught. Because he didn't want Shota to get into trouble again, Osamu finally asked Shota to stop calling him dad. The next morning, Osamu took Shota to the bus stop. Hearing Osamu's request last night, Shota, who was sad, finally could only remain silent. He couldn't even say goodbye to Osamu even though Osamu really wanted to hear that sentence. He was even willing to chase him. After he was far enough, it was only then Shota finally looked back and called him dad. In a different place, Yuri was seen playing alone while singing a rhyme she knew from Shota. This poor girl looked very lonely and looked outside the house from the balcony. A glimpse of sadness and loneliness was clearly seen in her eyes.